It's very much one at a time through this tight and twisty gravel section, and there's so much undulation through there as well that it really does make it quite tricky. And you can see there, oh, massive contact! A huge incident there. The door was shut by David Watt, and James Constantine into the wall, into the side of Luke Constantine there as well. Smoke pouring out of the Suzuki Swifts. And now Will Lavender struggling to get some drive by the wheel of his car, and over goes Corey Padgett. Huge drama again here in the Suzuki Swift. So two races, two first lap incidents, and Corey Paget's car goes tumbling over on the gravel to the front. And Derek Tohill going round in the background there as well. So big drama for the Irishman. To follow them through, yeah, he did. So Selig goes, Joker and contact has emerged Vittles and O'Donovan emerged with the Joker. Oh, a broken suspension surely there for Vittles. The car is crabbing down the start finish straight and that's an end in dramatic fashion in Q1 race two here for Robert Vittles. Problems for Julian Godfrey on the slowdown lap. There was a fire with this car yesterday in practice for Mark Donnelly and sadly it's reared its ugly head at the end of Q2 race one here. You can see how close they are running to each other. It was just four tenths of a second, the gap between them as they came over the timing line. Very sideways on the gravel there for Ovenden and into the wall at the end of Q3 on the final lap. So that's put pay to any possible chance of taking second place there for Tristan Ovenden. And he'll just about hold on for a podium into the Joker then comes Max Watt. So this is the battle then for the de facto uh, race lead in this one. Owen Robbins being lent on there by Finley. Scott and contact up the inside. Scott goes round, as does Watt as well. So both drivers off into the barrier. Robbins goes round, he's into the tyre wall, and that's a big impact at the final corner for taking down the start finish rate. That is going to be crucial here, potentially, as well. And that is a big problem, I'm afraid to say, for Tony Lynch and Simon Hart in the retro class. Tony Lynch's MR2 is on his side, and Simon Hart's 137 is fake facing the wrong way, coming through the gravel then. So absolutely huge drama here. The red flag is unsurprisingly out. And that brings a premature conclusion to the Super Retro and Retro Class race. And I highly imagine...